One of these three men parlayed his experiences as a prisoner on a chain gang into a contract worth $80,000. What is your name, please? My name is Don Pierce. My name is Don Pierce. My name is Don Pierce. Only one of these gentlemen is the real Don Pierce. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you this evening by a new chiffon, the soft margarine. So soft, it comes in a tub. New chiffon margarine. And now, here's our host on To Tell the Truth, Bud Collier! Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening. Good evening, Bud. Good evening, Bud. Hey, it's wonderful to look forward to spend this evening with you every week. Not many guys have a blessing like that. And the money, too. Ah, come on. Take it down off that area. Open up the envelope, if you will, and follow along with me on this first story. I, Don Pierce, have been a jack of all trades and master of none. Over the years, I have wandered about the country working as a merchant seaman, a painter, and a short order cook. I wound up in Florida where I tried my hand at safe cracking, but wasn't very good at that either. I always seemed to pick the wrong safes, and most often I found nothing but old love letters and leftover sandwiches. With my kind of luck, I was caught and sentenced to two years of hard labor on a chain gang. Surprisingly, this turned out to be my first break. While working on the roads, my fellow prisoners told me about a fabulous character known in chain gang circles as Cool Hand Luke. Luke was a super convict, a war hero, an expert on the banjo, and the possessor of indomitable courage in the face of brutality and privation of life on a chain gang. I took notes on Luke's story, and after my release, wrote a book based on his life. Two days after it was published, I sold the motion picture rights for $80,000. Signed, Don Pierce. <laughs> Three gentlemen all claim to be Don Pierce. We'll start the questioning with Orson Bean. Orson? Thank you. Uh, number three, what did Cool Hand Luke get sent up for? Well, he was sent up uh, for uh, safe cracking. Yeah? Was he, was he, number one, was he an inept safe cracker? Is that why he got caught, or was he just unlucky? Well, if you're caught, you're inept. <laughs> so. uh, number one, uh, tell me about life on the chain gang. Are they a pretty disreputable bunch, or did you find about the same uh, average of decent Joes that you would in any other situation? That depends on your point of view, I'm afraid. Well, you personally. I mean, did you find people that you could be friends with? Oh, yes. Uh, number two, uh, do you break rocks on a chain gang? Not anymore. What do you do? Do you really wear leg irons and that? Uh, the uh, ones who try to escape do. Yeah, but if you were good, you, you didn't have to actually wear the chains? That's right. Well, would, why is, was it a chain gang? Now, did you ever wear them? Like Because the ones on it who did uh, try to escape and uh, ah. they had to be chained. Number three, did you wear those fine uniforms with the stripes? Kitty Number Carlisle. Three, did, they have, did they have bloodhounds? They did. And can they really catch men in the swamps? Not in the swamps, no. Oh, number one, uh, the water stops a, a bloodhound from finding his quarry? Generally, yes. Number two, did you use nitroglycerin when you cracked the safe? No, ma'am, I did not. What did you use? I used an acetylene torch. Oh, no wonder you got caught. It's very noisy. <laughs> uh, number three, who was your publisher? Uh, Charles Scribner's Sons. Number one, did you ever write anything before you turned your hand to this? This particular book, yes. I've written other, tried to write other books before. Oh, you have? Mm -hmm. uh, number two, who bought the, the picture rights? Uh, J. Lem Production. And number three, who's going to be in it? I don't know yet, but uh, it's uh, Jack Lemons, uh, and it will be released through Columbia. Thank you. Number one, how heavy are the leg irons? Uh, Tom Poston. Gosh, how do you know all these things, Kitty? <laughs> I just came from Florida, and uh, when I took off from the Palm Beach Airport, I noticed that those roads down there uh, go through some swampy territory. Number two, did you ever work on any roads? I did, yes. Now, uh, along what lines are those roads built in the first place? Number two, again, please. 
Well, we didn't really build the roads. We do the maintenance on the road, you know, like uh, cutting away brush along the side of the roads. There was only one road that we built, and that was just a small, uh, going through a swamp, just a small stretch. Thank you. Uh, number three, how do you fellas sleep when you're in a chain gang? Sleep in bunks. No, I mean, uh, under what uh, security precautions? Well, we have a regular camp that we go back to every night. We uh, had a regular camp that we went back to every night. Well, number one, uh, you probably... Oops. Peggy Cat. Thank you. Number three, what's the name of your book? Cool Hand Luke. Oh, oh. Uh, well, number one, why was it called Cool Hand? Uh, he got the term because he played a very good, cool hand at poker. Oh. Number two, do they let you play poker on the chain gang? Yes. Well, that's not so bad. Well, I mean, it's not good. Three. <laughs> Tell me, where, where in Florida was your jail? Well, the, the jail in Florida? The yeah, state penitentiary is in Rayford. Now, number one, can they make you work if you say you don't want to? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Always. They, they, they can make you work. Number three, do they ever have you make jute bags? Jute bags? Yeah. I never heard the expression before. I did in the movies. Number two, what's <laughs> juice? I don't know. I guess it was on foreign movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have. So, take your jute and mark your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once, without change, and of course, without any consultation. Vote now, if you will, panel, <clears throat> on the basis of the knowledge that you have for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I'm not in favor of, of anybody going to a chain gang, but... On the other hand, I'm not in favor of people indiscriminately cracking safes that don't belong to them. I thought it was number one, because I think he might have known what jute and jute mills were if, you'd, if he'd been asked. Peggy Cat. Well, I think maybe they don't use jute anymore. I voted for two. I don't want to say I voted for because he looks like a jailbird. <laughs> I voted for him. He gives very cool to me. Orson. I think two has a shifty-eyed look. <laughs> so I figure he's a liar and it's not him, and I voted for one. Uh, I was all set to vote for three until Peggy said, uh, can they make you work? And he said, oh, yeah. And it really looked like he was remembering the sting of the lash. <laughs> I wax poetic at the strangest moments. Kitty Carlisle. Well, I voted for number three because uh, I think he looks like a man who's done all those things, merchant, seaman, painter, Time. short order, cook, Time. Time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he also looks as though he might have written a book. So there we have it. So the vote's all in and you heard the reasons given. Let's find out which of these three gentlemen, in truth, is Don Pierce. Will the real Don Pierce please stand up? Don, we wish you every success with your book Thank you. from here on in. Thank you very much. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Tom Maiden, and I manage a restaurant in uh, the uptown east side of New York called Dorian's Red Hand, and I've waited on Peggy Cass a couple of times in other places I worked. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Art McHugh. And I am a New York, New York City policeman. <laughs> well, we thank you very much, gentlemen. And figuring the score, we find there were two incorrect votes, and that's twice $250 for a total of $500 you take along with you. And our sincere thanks for joining us this night. Goodbye, and God bless you. Now, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Lizalot. My name is Lizalot. My name is Lizalot. Again, if you will, panel, follow along. I, Lisa Lott, left my native Denmark three years ago and came to New York to work as a model. I scrimped and saved, and when I had accumulated enough money, returned to Copenhagen, opened my own boutique, and started designing fabrics, hats, and dresses. My things caught on, 
And recently, I returned to this country where I have just shown my first American collection. While fashion writers have described my clothes as Danish mod, I prefer to think that my creations are a great deal more casual. We are wearing three examples of my work, each with a matching hat. The first is a cotton knit tank top shift with a large pocket. Next, a poplin suit in a fabric of my own design. It features a double-breasted jacket with a striped lining over a sleeveless dress. Last, culottes, a one-piece printed poplin jumpsuit. You will notice that incorporated in each design is my trademark, a heart, signed Lisa Lott. <laughs> Three young ladies all claim to be Lisa Lott, and we'll start the cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, Bud. Number one, what does a dress like that sell for with the hat? Approximately $18. Thank you. Uh, number two, what is your last name? Ringler. Uh, number three, where do you have your shop in Denmark? In the center. In the what? In the center of Copenhagen. Oh, in Copenhagen. Uh, number one, how do you design your own fabrics? Well, I first have to look at the material and uh, I have to feel the weight of the material and somehow um, the idea comes to... Uh, well, that's designing the dress. But number two, how do you design the fabrics? Well, I just see color scales and uh, like if it is a soft jersey, then I use very soft colors. I see. Thank you. Now, but why do you have a heart on everything? Tom <laughs> Foster. Uh, why do... What? I didn't, uh, I didn't understand Kitty's question, so I'm not in a position to answer it. But number three, I don't see the heart on number two's, uh, uh, the, the lovely blue. You can't see that at home, but that's a gorgeous pale blue creation that number two is right. Number three, where is the heart there? It's uh, including the design. You find it together. Oh, I can see it now. Oh, yes, oh, I see. Now, number uh, one, what is the material in that fabric that you designed for number two's dress? It's cotton, cotton, washable cotton, cotton bousquet. Well, number two, you, if I may, do you design other materials themselves? Yes. Now, to whom do you go with an idea for a material design? You don't loom them yourself, do you, or weave them, whatever you do? No, I have uh, my people working for me, and right here in New York, I have a uh, type of fabrics print the material. Peggy Katz. Thank you. Uh, number three, in what country is Mar uh, Mary Meckos made? Finland. Thank you. Uh, number one, what is design research? I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Number two, which paper does Eugenia Shepherd work for? The Herald Tribune. Number three, which paper does uh, Carol Bjorkman work for? A Women's Wear Daily. Wow. Number one, which paper yeah. does Pat Peterson work for? I don't know. Oh, okay. Number two, what is Bing and Grandal? I don't know. No. Thank you. Uh, number three, what is the statue in Copenhagen Harbor of the famous one? Orson B. <laughs> number one, who is Fatso Marco? <laughs> don't know, eh? That rules you out. <laughs> number one, are you wearing the, uh, the, the, knit, the knit tank top shift? Yes, I am. And a fine figure of a girl you are, number one, whether it's you or not. Uh, number three, uh, Number three, is there a uh, is there a beer garden in the Tivoli Gardens? A what? A beer you? garden, a beer restaurant that sells just okay. beer in the Tivoli Gardens. And all the restaurants are serving beer. I don't know if there's a special one. Uh, all right. Number two, do you pronounce it Copenhagen like number three or Copenhagen? Copenhagen. Uh, how do you pronounce it, number one? Copenhagen. That's it. Time for you now to mark your ballot. So mark them at once, without any consultation, if you will, please. And, of course, without change, once you have marked. Vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Uh, mark the town for whom did you vote? Well, that looks like a heart a little bit. I voted for number three. Wait a minute, I've got it upside down. I voted for number three because uh, Robert Q. Lewis told me point blank that it's pronounced Copenhagen. So I voted for number three. Uh, <laughs> 
Thank you, Jack. Well, it's really Kirby and Hervin or something like that. <laughs> but Bing and Grandal is a very big china store in uh, the middle of uh, Copenhagen. And uh, Pat Peterson was the fashion editor of the New York Times, so I figured number one. So I voted for three. Orson Bing. Oh. Robert Q. Lewis. Mm. <laughs> I voted for number three as well. I hope we're all wrong, because I hope these girls make some money. But I I've been to Denmark, and they do say Copenhagen. Yeah. Maybe just the ones I talk to. And number three looks like a young girl who would carve. She looks like Mary Quant. She has that same look in her eye. Uh, model. And uh, she looks like those two American girls that went to Paris and made a sensation. A, a certain look. Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number three. <laughs> They're all pretty as a picture, but I thought number three looked like the model who would really make those kinds of clothes. So that makes it unanimous for number three. Well, let's see what happens and whether we've come close to the truth or moved away from it. Let's find out now which one of these three lovely young ladies is in truth Lisa Lott. Will the real Lisa Lott please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. You may be seated. Yes, what is it, Doc? Well, I, the first uh, statement that I think the designs are perfectly lovely. Adorable. And second, a question. Would, would the real uh, Lada Lenya there ask, tell us how she says the uh, name of her hometown? And... She uh, pronounced it perfectly right. That's right. no excuse, number yeah, three. Say it. Say it. Copenhagen. But you said Copenhagen. You were just talking no, American. No, you didn't ask me. You did once say Copenhagen. No, I didn't. In the center, you said. Oh. The shop in the center of Copenhagen. Oh. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Copenhagen. Well, I can't wait to see Robert Q. Lewis, the Dane, <laughs> and tell him what I think. <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Alma Senjuk, and I'm the receptionist for Lone Brow Beer. <laughs> Number two, what is your name and what do you do? My name is Marion Fels, and I'm a dancer currently in the Portway show on a clear day you can see forever. Taking the score, we find there were no incorrect votes, but in that case, there still is $150 coming your way, and our sincere thanks to you for gracing our show so very prettily. Good night, and God bless you. Now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Gary Morfitt. My name is Gary Morfitt. My name is Gary Morfitt. Follow along again, if you will, with your copies of this one. I, Gary Morfitt, am a student in Cornell University's School of Hotel Administration. Last year, a friend and I decided to get some practical experience. We formed a corporation, sold stock, and bought some land four miles from the campus. Then we bought three old railroad boxcars, placed them side by side, knocked out the adjoining walls, rebuilt the interior, and opened a night spot called the boxcar. The lighting fixtures are railroad lanterns. The seats in the booths are green felt coach chairs. Coat hooks are railroad spikes. And the footrail around the bar is made from a section of track. All of us on the staff wear black derbies and red and white striped shirts. We serve such appropriate drinks as the steam engine and the golden spike. On Friday and Saturday nights, customers dance along a winding railroad track painted in black on the floor. To make the picture complete, I, the president of the corporation, live right next door in a converted railroad caboose. Signed, Gary Morfitt. Very well, panel. These three young men all claim to be Gary Morfitt. We'll start with Tom Poston. Tom? Well, I have an interesting uh, sort of an aside from the fact question I'd like to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us are familiar with another Gary Morfitt or Thomas Garrison Morfitt or something. Number uh, uh, two, are you perhaps related to this man, also known to us as Gary Moore? Perhaps. I get, I'll take that as... Yes. Is, are you... Uh, yes. Number one, uh, directly, are you his son? Uh, yes, sir. Ah, oh, proud to know you. Proud to know any part of that family. Uh, number three, do you serve alcoholic drinks at this night spot? Yes, we do. Well, number two, how did you manage that, if it's true? Is it true, and how did you manage that? To serve alcoholic beverages? Yeah, were you older than 21 or something when you started the night spot? Oh, yes. And then I take it, number one, that the customers must all be 
Over what age? 18 in New York. Ah, thank you. Peggy Cass. Thank you. Uh, number one, is your place in Ithaca? Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, number two, how much do the cars cost? The box cars? The box cars were 500 apiece. 1500 Well, number three, how much did it cost you altogether to open the place up? Uh, approximately $30,000. Gee whiz. Number two, how much is a stein of beer? Uh, 75 cents. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, number one, do you have a little ukulele band or a banjo band or do you have a jukebox? No, we have live music, uh, different types of groups on different evenings. Oh, thank you. Now, number three, where did you get your kitchen? Did you get a railroad kitchen? Uh, no, this was all improvised after. We have a regular kitchen built in. Orson B. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad, number one, that you have a foot rail. I'm all for that. I have uh, bumped my chin on many of them. Uh, what is what is uh, the steam engine? What are the ingredients of the steam engine? Uh, the steam engine is a uh, large martini. A large martini. Grand. Bless my soul. Number three. How could you blow thirty grand on, on, on throwing together some more? You could have built a whole house for thirty grand. Uh, this was completely redoing from the start. This was just a shell. These boxes. Is it really posh? Is excuse me. Posh. Is it posh? No, so Elegant, slant. grand. They don't say that in Ithaca? <laughs> Collegiate. Uh, Remember Stu? Uh, <laughs> Katie Carlisle. Has Mr. Stuth swing since you opened the <laughs> Number two, how do you manage your studies and all this work uh, at the bar? It's rough. But you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Number one, uh, you have a drink called the Golden Spike. Do you know who drove the real Golden Spike when the two uh, railroads m managed to meet? Uh, no, I don't. You don't know who it was? No, I don't. Number three, what is a golden spike in your restaurant? A golden spike is a champagne cocktail. Thank you. Uh, number one, uh, when you, well, if, if this thing costs so much to put together, what are the profits so far, don't you want to say? Well, we've only been open for a short time, so it's hard to say. But you think you will have some? That's it. Time for you now to mark your ballots. So mark them at once, panel, if you will, please, for the one you think is the real one. And vote without any consultation whatsoever, and don't change once you have marked your ballot. Vote for number one, or vote for number two, or vote for number three. Ballots are finally all marked. So, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I think that certainly Gary could be proud of any of those fellows, but I, I voted for number two because... Uh, he seemed to have a clearer idea about how to do this and study at the same time, and I think that must be very important. Peggy Cat. Well, I voted for number three because, you know, Orson does talk awful collegiate. <laughs> <laughs> Orson B. Mercy. I, uh, I figure maybe number two is wearing a derby because he has a crew cut under there and doesn't want us to see it. And even though he looks a little bit like Gary Moore, I voted for him anyway because I really think he's the one. So it's fair. Kitty Carlisle. Well, I've been trying to figure out which one looked like the real Gary Moore, and I don't know. So I voted for number one. He looked to me like a fellow who could swing both uh, a bar. Huh? Oh, excuse what me. What did I do? No, nothing. Uh, did I do something bad? Just go on. Don't be thrown off, Kitty. Go right ahead. He looks as though he could swing a bar, and he could swing everything, and he could also do his studies, <laughs> and I've done something dreadful. Oh, you haven't done anything at all. <laughs> bad enough, because anybody looks like a man who could swing from a bar. Uh, <laughs> votes are all in, and uh, there we have it. We'll find out now which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is Gary Morfitt. Will the real Gary Morfitt please stand up? <laughs> and please give our great, deep, and sincere love to your dad, will you? Certainly, Pleasure thank you. to have you on the show. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Frank Adusi, and I teach English at the New York Phoenix School of Design. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? Uh, my name's Chris Day, and I'm currently unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Time you did well. There were three incorrect votes. That's three times two hundred and fifty dollars total. Therefore, that you take along a divide is seven hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for being with us. Hope you enjoyed yourselves as much as you made it happy for us. Goodbye and God bless you.
That's all we have time for tonight. Good night to you, panel. Good, Good night, bud. Good night to all of you. Of course, we'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. And in the meantime, until next week or tomorrow, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cogman production. Lisa Locke's dresses are manufactured in the United States by Ronnie Fabrics. <laughs> to Tell the Truth has been brought to you by new Polyden tablets, the powerful new denture cleanser tablets to keep your breath fresh, keep your smile bright and natural. Johnny Olson speaking, the program pre-recorded. <laughs>